The Prophet وسلم, said that every morning the son of Adam wakes up, all of his body parts defer to his tongue and say to the tongue, fear Allah concerning us. We are part of you and you are part of us. If you are upright and steadfast, we will be upright and steadfast. And if you are crooked, then we will be crooked. The tongue by far is one of the most dangerous of the body parts, simply because it is the thing that lands most people in the hellfire. سُئِلَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَا أَكْثَرَ مَا يُدْخِلِ النَّاسَ الْجَنَّةِ قَالَ تَقْوَى اللَّهِ وَحُسْنُ خُلُقِ قَالَ وَقَالُوا وَمَا أَكْثَرَ مَا يُدْخِلِ النَّاسَ النَّارَ قَالَ الْفَمُّ وَالْفَرَجِ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked, what is the thing that lands most people in paradise? What is the thing that causes most people to enter into paradise? He said, the fear of Allah and husnu khuluq and good character. And then they asked him, well, what is the thing that lands most people into the hellfire? He said, your tongue and your private part. Your tongue and your private part. Lands most people will be in the hellfire for one of those two reasons. Either lack of control over their tongue or lack of control over their body parts. Not only that, but the tongue is directly connected to the heart. And the heart in Islam is the seat of faith. It is the seat of your iman. And it's no coincidence that the heart and the tongue are connected. There's an old saying that people from down south, they say, don't wear your feelings on your sleeve. Meaning, don't allow what you feel in your heart to come off of your tongue. Because your tongue and your heart are directly connect connected. Not only in the manner of speaking what you feel, which is not always a good thing, but also because the tongue is connected to the heart in that the Iman, your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be correct until you learn how to correct your tongue. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, as it was mentioned in the authentic hadith, لا يستقيم إيمان عبد حتى يستقيم قلبه ولا يستقيم قلبه حتى يستقيم لسان That the Iman, the faith of the servant will not be steadfast, will not be strong until his heart is strong and his heart will not be strong and steadfast until his tongue is strong and steadfast. You see the connection, how the tongue and the heart is connected. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, مَا شَيْءٌ أَحْوَجْ إِلَى تُولِ السِّجِنْ مِنْ لِسَانِي Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, there's nothing that deserves to be put in prison for a long period of time more than my tongue. There's nothing that deserves a longer stint in prison than my tongue because it always gets me in trouble. How many of us, we say things and then afterwards we beat ourselves up because we're constantly allowing our tongue to control our lives. And the Prophet وسلم, mentioned another hadith, مَنْ يَضْمَنْ لِي مَا بَيْنَ لِحْيَيْهِ وَمَا بَيْنَ رِجْلَيْ أَضْمَنْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever can guarantee me control over what is between his two lips and what is between his two legs, I can guarantee him paradise. If you can guarantee me control over what is between your two lips, meaning your tongue, and guarantee me control over what is between your legs, meaning your private part, then I can guarantee you paradise. Because that is the thing that lands most people in the hellfire, are the tongue and the private part. So if you can guarantee me control over these things, then I can guarantee you paradise. Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Ansif udhunayka min feek, fa innama ju'ilat laka udhunani wa fammun wahid li tasma' akthar mimma tatakallam. Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, be fair, with respect to your lip, with respect to your tongue and your two ears. Be fair with respect to your tongue and your two ears. He said, because you have been given two ears and one tongue so that you can listen more than you speak. If you have two ears and one tongue, be fair. Meaning, give your ears the rights that they deserve 
as you have two of them and give your tongue the rights that it deserves in that you only have one of them. You only have one tongue. And just imagine if people had two tongues. La ilaha illallah. Just imagine if people had two tongues, how much damage and corruption they would be able to cause on the earth. Alhamdulillah, Allah had only given us one tongue. But he said, be fair. Exercise fairness between your ears and your tongue because you have been given two ears and one tongue so that you can listen more than you speak. There are a number of what are known as afat or dangers of the tongue. And inshallah ta'ala will take today and tomorrow and we'll try to concentrate on 10 dangers of the tongue that scholars mention that may land a person in the hellfire. Number one is al-kalam fi ma la ya'ni. It's speaking about things that don't concern you. Opening your mouth and letting your tongue speak about things that you have absolutely nothing to do with. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned an authentic hadith from the perfection of one's Islam is that he leaves off things that don't concern him. And today, subhanAllah, think about how many things we put ourselves in that have absolutely nothing to do with us. Speaking about matters that don't concern us. If you are a physician and you know nothing about Islam, then your speaking should be about your profession and not about Islam. If you are imam and all you know is Islam, then your speaking should be about Islam and not about any other field of knowledge that you have no knowledge about. Stick, you know, uh, stick to what is specific to you. One of the scholars by the name of Sahil ibn Abdullah, he said, Man takallama fima la ya'ni hurima as-sidq. Whoever speaks about or is in the habit of speaking about things that do not concern him, he will be prevented from having truthfulness in his speech. Truthfulness in speech is someone who is very, very keen about what comes out of his mouth, calculates his words very closely, and speaks very little and only when necessary. And today, unfortunately, with the creation of the internet and modern technology, we're all over the place, speaking about matters that have absolutely nothing to do with us. وَقِيلَ لِلُقْمَانِ الْحَكِيمِ ما بلغ من حكمتك قال لا أسأل عما لا عم لا يسأل لا أسأل عما كفيته ولا أتكلم بما لا يعني لقمان was asked لقمان the wise he was asked how did you reach this level of wisdom as لقمان was known as الحكيم the wise one لقمان الحكيم and they were asking him how did you reach this level of knowledge and he said لا أسأل I don't ask about things that I already have knowledge about. And I don't speak about things that don't concern me. Think about those two things. I don't ask about things that I already have knowledge of. You come to certain circles of knowledge where there's a scholar and student comes and he asks the scholar a question because he's what's doing is fetwa shopping. Ask the scholar, ask the scholar, ask the scholar until he gets the answer that he already that he wants. But if you already know, then don't ask questions about things that you already have knowledge of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Fas'alu ahla dhikri in kuntum la ta'alamun. Ask the people of knowledge when you don't know. When you don't know. But if you already have knowledge about an issue, why are you asking about it? He said, I don't ask, th I don't ask questions about things that I already have knowledge of, and I don't talk about things that don't concern me. وقال حسن البصري رحمه الله تعالى من علامات إعراض الله سبحانه وتعالى عن العبد أن يجعل شغله فيما لا يعني خذلانا من الله جل وعلا حسن البصري رحمه الله تعالى he said one of the signs that Allah has abandoned you is that he allows you to busy yourself with things that don't concern you that have absolutely no benefit or no bearing on your relationship between you and him خُذْلَانًا مِنْ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى This is the ultimate, the ultimate abandonment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he leaves you to busy yourself in things that do not concern you. 
Think about people who go and write articles, who go and do speeches about issues that have absolutely nothing to do with them. When you could have taken that time to build a better relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is just some of the dangers of the tongue. And this is the first one, and that is speaking about matters that don't concern you. And we'll continue tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.